Welcome to uh, module four of the course control of uh, mobile robots. So in the last module, we uh, learned about linear systems and we saw where they came from. And at the end, we even managed to control them a little bit. And in fact, we felt rather good about ourselves because we could design a state feedback controller for a point mass that stabilized it. But at the same time, we were a little queasy and uneasy about this whole thing because we had to have X, meaning the state, to do our control design. But in reality, we actually don't have X. We have Y, the output. So what this module is devoted to is trying to, uh, first of all, be systematic in how we do the control design. And secondly, how do we actually overcome this seeming paradox of needing X but only having Y? So what we're going to do in the first lecture is stabilize the point mass. We're going to return to our old friend. And uh, in general, if I have a linear system, x dot is ax plus bu, y is cx, the dilemma, as I already stated, is that we seem to need x for stability, but all we really have is y. So here's the game plan. We're going to ignore the fact that we don't have y. Instead, we're going to design our controller as if we had the state itself. And then somehow we're going to hope that we can figure out the state from the measurements, meaning from y. And this is the game plan we're going to pursue throughout this entire module. And the first step is, of course, to design u as if we had x. So step one is to do the control design. And we're going to use a method called pole placement. And uh, pole placement is a rather powerful idea. So if I have my point mass system again, x dot is ax plus bu, where we have our old friends, the a and b matrices that we've seen over and over again. Well, state feedback means that what we're going to do is we're going to pick u is negative kx, where k in this particular situation is a 1 by 2 matrix. So it has two components, k1 and k2. And those are our gains. And we've already seen in the previous module that K1 is a gain that looks at position, and K2 is a gain that looks at velocity. And by tweaking them, somehow we can get the system to be, behave well, because we've already seen that. So the one question we need to ask first is, of course, how do we actually pick these control gains? Meaning, what should K be? Well, here is the whole idea behind pole placement. When we plug in U is minus KX, we get a closed loop system. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick k such that the closed loop system has the right eigenvalues. And right meaning we get to pick them. And the reason it's called pole placement is that eigenvalues of these system matrices are sometimes referred to as poles. And what we're going to do is we're going to make them be what we want them to be. In particular, we want them to have negative real part because that is uh, what we need for asymptotic stability. So but before we do that, we actually need to figure out how do we compute eigenvalues? So in general, if I have a matrix M, this doesn't have to be you know, a 2 by 2. This is just some general M. Then every square matrix M has a so-called characteristic equation associated with it. And it's given by this chi M of lambda. And it's kind of a mouthful. It's the determinant of lambda times the identity matrix minus M. And then we set this determinant equal to 0. And the lambdas that solve this are the eigenvalues. Well, let's see what this means. If I have a 2 by 2 system, m equal to m1, m2, m3, and m4, then lambda i, meaning lambda times the identity minus m, well, it's lambda times the identity minus m. Well, if you plug this in, you get the following matrix. Right? OK, now let's take the determinant of this matrix. So the determinant, well, it's this object that you get by taking this element times this element, and then you subtract away this element times that element. Uh, this is how you do it for 2 by 2 matrices. Uh, in general, it can become even more complicated. But in this case, I get this times that, which shows up as lambda minus m1 times lambda minus m4. And then I get minus m2, or minus minus m2 times minus m3, which shows up like this. So this is the, 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 the determinant of this 2 by 2 m matrix. 
Okay, we need to set this determinant equal to zero. So uh, carrying out the multiplications, we have this second order equation that we have to solve for lambda in order to be able to find the eigenvalues. All right, let's try to do that. We have this equation. The way we solve second order equations is, well, there are formulas for this. It's possible to do it. In this case, it turns out that lambda is this rather annoying looking uh, expression here. But this is what the eigenvalue, the two eigenvalues to this two by two matrix would be. But it is annoying. I really don't want to do this. So the question is, is there an easier way of making the eigenvalues be what we would like them to be? It turns out the answer is yes. There is something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. And this fancy looking or fancy sounding theorem says that if I have a polynomial, the roots to that polynomial are determined by the coefficients, which means that, you know what, I actually don't have to solve this equation. Here I have coefficients in front of lambda. And here I have the coefficients that aren't in front of any lambda. Those coefficients alone are enough to implicitly but completely determine the eigenvalues. So what we're going to do is we're actually not going to solve this. We're just going to stop here and say, fine, let's start massaging the coefficients directly. So if we go back to our point mass again, I pick u is negative kx, then I get x dot is a minus bkx. We've seen this before. Um, this is the closed loop dynamics. And in particular, if I plug in what k is, I get a minus bk being these two uh, matrices here. And if I compute that, I get 0, 1, negative k1, negative k2. And I encourage all of you to perform this multiplication at home just to make sure that you trust that this is indeed what we get. Now, let's compute the eigenvalues, or at least the coefficients in this thing called the characteristic equation. So chi a minus bk lambda, it's this determinant. It's the determinant of this matrix, or the negative of that matrix, uh, plus lambda times the identity. So this, what I have here, of course, is lambda i minus a minus bk. And if you compute this determinant, you get lambda squared plus lambda k2 plus k1. That's not so bad. And the neat thing here is that, again, all we care about are these coefficients, the things that uh, determine what the roots are without us actually having to, to compute the roots. Now, why does that help us? Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to pick our favorite eigenvalues in the whole world. We're going to pick the eigenvalues that we would like the system to have. And if we somehow magically manage to make the closed-loop system have these eigenvalues, then the characteristic equation would be, well, lambda minus lambda 1, because the characteristic equation has to be 0. It has to have lambda 1 as a root. And if I plug in lambda 1, I get 0 here. Similarly, if I plug in lambda 2, I get 0 here, and lambda n, 0 here. So what I have is a product of lambda minus these desired favorite eigenvalues in the whole world. So let's do that. Uh, so for the robot or the point mass, I'm going to pick both eigenvalues at negative 1. I, need, I know that they need to have negative real part. Well, minus 1 is particularly simple because then I get this phi of lambda, which is this desired characteristic equation, not the actual characteristic equation, but the desired one. It's just lambda plus 1 times lambda plus 1. Or if I carry out this multiplication, I get lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1. Now. What we need to do is simply line up these coefficients with the actual coefficients that we have. So if I do that, I see this is the characteristic equation. This is what I would like it to look like. Well, here are the coefficients in front of lambda, and here are these coefficients that are hanging out by themselves. All we do now is simply line these up. So k2 has to be equal to 2, k1 has to be equal to 1, and Voila, I've actually designed the K matrix that I need. So now all I do is I plug this in to my original system, which is x dot is ax plus bu. But I close the loop right now with u being negative kx. And I have successfully stabilized the system by placing the eigenvalues 
exactly where I would like them to be.